A North Korean soldier shot and injured while running across the border into South Korea is out of surgery and recovering. This is you running for your life. In the darkest corners of North Korea, where hunger grips the nation, survival has become a daily battle for its people. Imagine a place where ordinary citizens are forced to resort to eating grasses to stave off starvation. It is within this grim reality that the most daring and perilous escapes take place. In this video, we dive into the heart-wrenching accounts of the most dangerous escapes from North Korea, shedding light on the extraordinary resilience and determination exhibited by those who risk everything for a chance at freedom. Chong Song Let's begin with the incredible story of a North Korean soldier who risked everything to escape the ironclad nation. It was a cold day in November 2017 when Chong Song, the son of a high-ranking North Korean general, found himself in a life-or-death situation. He never planned to escape that day, but fate had other plans for him. Growing up in North Korea, Chong Song had a comfortable life because of his father's position. However, circumstances suddenly changed forcing him to make a daring decision. After getting into trouble with his friends, he sought solace in a few drinks at a bar. Feeling a bit better, Chong Song got into his car to head back to the military base. As he approached a checkpoint, he should have stopped, but instead he made a reckless choice and drove through it. This triggered a frantic chase, with bullets flying around him and his life hanging in the balance. Despite the danger, Chong Song refused to give up. He raced at high speed, narrowly avoiding losing control of his car as he swerved into a ditch. Undeterred, he left the damaged vehicle behind and sprinted toward the border, his pursuers hot on his heels. The soldiers chasing him were determined, but Chong Song wasn't ready to give up either. Fueled by adrenaline, he pushed himself to the limit, giving everything he had. Finally, he reached the border fence, crossing into unfamiliar territory. However, his escape came at a great cost. His body was riddled with five bullet wounds from his former comrades. Unconscious and near death, Chong Song's fate hung in the balance. Fortunately, South Korean soldiers discovered him and quickly brought him to safety for medical treatment. After recovering, Chong Song expressed no regrets about leaving his homeland. He recently granted his first interview to a foreign media publication, shedding light on life in North Korea and the reasons that compelled him to escape. In the interview with the Japanese newspaper Sankei Shimbun, Chong spoke about the heightened tensions between the United States and North Korea at the time of his escape expressing a belief that war was imminent. The newspaper published a video of the interview, with Chong's face hidden, but his voice revealing a slight North Korean accent. His identity was later confirmed by Japanese security services. Chong disclosed that his father held the rank of Major General, and he himself had enjoyed a relatively comfortable upbringing in North Korea. However, he expressed indifference towards the rule of Kim Jong-un and claimed that he had no loyalty to the North Korean regime. Chong estimated that approximately 80% of his generation shared this sentiment. Regarding the reasons for his escape, Chong stated that the hereditary system in North Korea, coupled with its inability to provide for its people, had eroded any interest or loyalty he may have had. He believed that such sentiments were prevalent among his peers as well. The oppressive grip of North Korea had been broken, and he embraced his newfound freedom. Ji Seong Ho it all started back in 1996, when Ji was just a teenager. At that time, North Korea was in the grips of a severe famine, and its citizens were suffering from starvation. Ji and his siblings were so desperate for food that they resorted to eating grass and rats just to survive. It was a heartbreaking and unhealthy situation. Determined to find a better way to feed his family, Ji decided to take a risk. He attempted to steal pieces of coal from a passing train, hoping to trade them for food. But tragically, he passed out from hunger and was hit by the train. The accident left him disabled, making life even more challenging for him and his family. However, Ji's spirit remained unbroken. Despite his disability, Ji was determined to escape the oppressive walls of North Korea and find a better life. He embarked on an arduous journey, traveling over 6,000 miles on crutches. From North Korea, he crossed the treacherous Tumen River into China and then made his way south, passing through different countries until he reached Thailand. It was an exhausting and grueling trip, but Ji never gave up. Eventually, Ji made it to South Korea, where he was fitted with a prosthetic arm and leg. This life-changing event happened roughly two decades ago. Since then, Ji has dedicated himself to helping other North Korean defectors and spreading information about the reclusive state. He has become a symbol of resilience and hope, 
In a remarkable turn of events, G was invited to the United States by President Donald Trump. He had the opportunity to share his story and even attended the State of the Union address, where he received a standing ovation from U.S. legislators. G waved his crutches triumphantly, a powerful symbol of his journey to freedom and a defiant message to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Reflecting on his journey, G keeps his crutches as a reminder of how far he has come and the personal victory he achieved against the oppressive regime. Today, he works tirelessly to help other North Korean defectors and to shed light on the plight of those still trapped in the reclusive state. Despite facing immense hardships and being disabled, he never lost hope and fought for his freedom. His journey serves as an inspiration to all of us, reminding us that with determination and resilience, we can overcome even the most formidable challenges and find a brighter future. While countless citizens and officials risked their lives to escape the clutches of North Korea, some defectors had secret agreements in place to make their exit. One such defector is Jiao Min Wu, a former soldier with a story that will send shivers down your spine. Jiao Min Wu. Unlike the daring escapes we've discussed before, Zhao Min Wu took a different approach. When he decided to leave, he fearlessly declared his intentions to the guards at the border. Now you might expect a tense standoff or a dramatic chase, but guess what? Since they were all military men, he was allowed to pass through without any trouble or harm. That's how his extraordinary journey began. Zhao Min Wu was on duty when he made up his mind to escape. So, he left North Korea wearing his military uniform, blending in as a refugee. But as he reached Thailand, he realized he couldn't keep parading around in that uniform. After all, other countries' military personnel might interpret his attire differently. So, he cleverly borrowed clothes from friends in Thailand and carefully stashed his uniform in a bag, treasuring it as a valuable asset. Who knows, he might need it again if he ever had to return to North Korea. You see, a military uniform and ID card hold immense power and influence in the country. They grant you access and authority to do almost anything within North Korea's borders. That's why Zhao Min Wu wore his uniform religiously, even when he wasn't on duty. It helped him maintain the respect and recognition bestowed upon military officers by civilians. Besides, wearing it served as a deterrent preventing anyone from messing with him or trying to start a fight. It became such an integral part of his identity that he couldn't imagine himself in ordinary clothes anymore. However, everything changed when he finally arrived in South Korea. In order to prove his genuine defection and dispel any suspicions of being a spy, he had to surrender his cherished uniform to the South Korean intelligence. It was a tough moment for him, letting go of a symbol that held deep significance. But don't worry, he managed to obtain a different uniform, a summer cotton one, to wear on special occasions. Nowadays, you might catch Zhao Min Wu donning his new uniform when he appears on Now On My Way To Meet You, a captivating talk show where North Korean defectors gather to reflect on and discuss their extraordinary experiences. It's a platform where they share their stories, shedding light on the trials and triumphs they encountered on their journey to freedom. Kim Woo-ju. Now buckle up for an incredible story that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Imagine this. Kim Woo-ju, a former gymnast, decides to take on the mind-boggling challenge of escaping North Korea not once, but twice. Who does that? Well, this guy did it. He managed to make a daring escape from the notorious hermit kingdom and settle down in South Korea, only to turn around and head back to North Korea just a year later. On New Year's Day, the adventure begins. Kim Woo-ju gets caught on a military security camera just south of the demilitarized zone DMZ. The authorities warn him to scram through a loudspeaker, and he seems to comply. But wait for it. Six hours later, under the cover of darkness, this guy starts using his gymnastic skills to scale a 10-foot barbed wire fence on the southern perimeter of the DMZ. Who needs Spider-Man when you have Kim Woo-ju? He manages to dodge cameras, triggers a fence alarm, and even shows up on thermal observation devices deep inside the zone. But guess what? He emerges unscathed on the other side and disappears into North Korea, never to be seen or heard from again. It's like he pulled off the ultimate magic trick. Now, here's where things get even more intriguing. When investigators checked out his temporary life in South Korea, they found only footprints and feathers, probably from his coat torn by the barbed wire. His apartment was as empty as a ghost town, except for a neatly folded blanket left outside for collection. This dude lived a low-key life, working as a night cleaner, avoiding bills and conserving gas, water, and electricity like a champ. He was practically a ghost, blending into the millions of people struggling to get by in Seoul. Now you might be wondering, why on earth did he go back? And why in such a dangerous way? Well, that was all because of the deadly coronavirus. 
The border between North Korea and China, usually buzzing with traders and workers, had turned into Fort Knox to keep the virus out. Guards were reportedly authorized to shoot on sight, so the chances of escaping illegally had plummeted. In fact, in the year Kim defected, only 229 North Koreans made it to South Korea, which was a fraction of the usual number. But let's not forget the bigger question, why go back at all? Some defectors returned to deliver money to their families, help troubled relatives, or even rescue others. But for many, life in South Korea is a massive culture shock. Imagine going from a country stuck decades behind the modern world to a hyperkinetic futurist maelstrom like Seoul. Now let's fast forward to Kim Woo Joo's fate. What's going to happen to him now that he's back in North Korea? At the very least, he'll probably have to attend propaganda meetings, where he'll have to talk about how terrible life in the South is. But things could get worse. Punishments in North Korea aren't your typical community service. They can mean ending up in brutal prison camps. It's like disappearing into thin air never to be seen again. Let's hope Kim can avoid such a grim fate. Mr. Kim Earlier this year, amidst the unprecedented circumstances brought about by the pandemic, Mr. Kim accomplished what seemed like an impossible feat. He orchestrated a daring escape from North Korea. Not only did he manage to flee himself, but he also ensured the safety of his entire family, including his pregnant wife, his mother, his brother's family, and even his father's ashes, which they carried in an urn. Their remarkable journey marked the first successful escape to South Korea in the year 2021, as the COVID-19 outbreak triggered panic in North Korea's government, resulting in the closure of borders and a halt in trade. Defections, once relatively common, had all but ceased. In an exclusive interview with the BBC, Mr. Kim shared the extraordinary details of his escape, becoming the first defector to do so since the pandemic began. He shed light on the current situation in North Korea, revealing instances of people succumbing to starvation and the escalating levels of repression. To safeguard his family in both Seoul and their homeland, he requested the BBC to withhold his full name. While the BBC cannot independently verify all the aspects of Mr. Kim's account, much of the information aligns with what other sources have previously disclosed. The night of their escape was fraught with turbulence. Fierce winds howled from the south, unleashing a storm in their path. Yet Mr. Kim had carefully calculated that these adverse weather conditions would work in their favor. He hoped that the rough seas would deter any surveillance ships from pursuing them. For years, Mr. Kim had nurtured this audacious plan, meticulously plotting every detail for months. However, even with all his preparations, fear still gripped his heart as the critical moment arrived. Ensuring the children's safety, Mr. Kim had administered sleeping pills, lulling his brother's little ones into a deep slumber. Now he and his brother had to navigate through a treacherous minefield in the darkness, stealthily making their way to the concealed mooring spot where their getaway boat awaited. With each step, they painstakingly avoided the piercing beams of the guard's searchlights. Once they reached the boat, they ingeniously concealed the children within old grain sacks, disguising them as mere bags of tools. And so, the family embarked on their perilous journey to South Korea. The men armed themselves with swords, while the women carried vials of poison. Clutched tightly in their hands were eggshells, carefully emptied and filled with a potent mixture of chili powder, and black sand. These makeshift weapons were to be used if they were confronted by coast guards, ready to crack the shells into their faces in self-defense. Park Hyun Woo Park, a young 26-year-old and his father had been living under constant pressure from the North Korean military ever since his mother and sister left. The military officers would relentlessly threaten and harass them, making their lives unbearable. But sometimes, such situations can only be endured for so long. On the fateful night of February 7, 2017, Park Hyun-woo and his father made up their minds to leave their home in the North Hamgyong province of North Korea for good. They knew they had to be discreet, avoiding any suspicion that could set off alarms. So they devised a plan. They would leave their house separately and rendezvous later that night. And that's exactly what they did, meeting at the semi-frozen Tumen River, which marks the border between China and North Korea. Now you might think that the Park family was living a life of suffering and hardship, given their circumstances. But in reality, they were quite comfortable, at least by North Korean standards. Despite both father and son working on the railway, the rest of their family secretly sent them money through a covert network. So financially, they were secure. But that didn't diminish their determination to seek freedom. 
As they embarked on their journey, Park Hyun Woo and his father carried a flash drive containing all the pictures and vital information they couldn't physically bring along. They also had a small packet of rat poison hidden in their mouths, wrapped in plastic, in case they were discovered. With these precautions in place, father and son embarked on their treacherous mission. Crossing the icy waters of the Tumen River was far from easy. Their wet clothes began to freeze as they pressed forward. But they didn't let the bitter cold deter them. They forged ahead, driven by their unwavering desire for freedom. Eventually, they successfully crossed the border, reaching the Chinese side of the river. Waiting for them on the other side was one of their sisters, who had been anxiously anticipating their arrival. The three of them quickly evaded detection by sneaking under a fence and boarding a waiting van that would take them to a safe house. It was at this safe house that Park Hyun Woo and his father discarded their North Korean leader lapel pins, symbolically bidding farewell to their oppressive past. Good riddance to bad rubbish, they thought as they rid themselves of these reminders of their former lives. The incredible journey of Park Hyun Woo is a story of resilience, sacrifice, and the unyielding human spirit that refuses to be shackled by oppression. Kim Ryan Hui. Now let's talk about the very interesting story of Kim Ryan Hui, a remarkable individual who defies the norm in North Korea. It's extremely rare to witness someone escaping from the grips of North Korea, let alone witness their willingness to return voluntarily to the very country they left behind. But Kim Ryan Hui's journey is nothing short of extraordinary. Her saga began in 2011 when she traveled to China to seek medical treatment. To her surprise, she discovered that there was no free healthcare available, and she found herself burdened with mounting bills. Determined to find a way to support herself, she took on various odd jobs to make ends meet. During her time in China, she crossed paths with a broker who specialized in smuggling North Koreans to South Korea. This encounter opened up a new possibility for Kim Ryan Hui. The broker assured her that she could earn more money in South Korea and eventually return to North Korea with the means to settle her debts. Intrigued by the promise of a better future, she made the bold decision to embark on this journey. Upon arriving in Seoul, Kim Ryan Hui had already made up her mind to leave. Her intention was to find a way back to her homeland in North Korea. This decision sent shockwaves throughout the media and even caught the attention of officials. North Korea, surprisingly, requested her return, while South Korea remained skeptical, fearing that she might attempt to travel back to North Korea through China. For the past seven years, Kim Ryan Hui's primary concern has been reuniting with her daughter and husband in Pyongyang. She has tirelessly pursued every means available to make her wish a reality. She has engaged in talks, expressing her heartfelt desire for reunion, and she has sent petitions to the United Nations, emphasizing the plight of being a stranger trapped in a foreign land. Kim Ryan Hui's story is proof of the extraordinary lengths a person will go to seek reunification with their loved ones and the struggles they endure along the way. It is a tale of courage, determination, and an unwavering spirit. Her journey captivates hearts and minds, leaving us contemplating the complexities of borders, family, and the yearning for a place to call home. Subscribers pick. Have you ever come across a photograph so powerful that it tells a story words cannot convey? This is a photo secretly smuggled out from North Korea, a country where the government tightly controls information. This banned image reveals a group of people yearning to escape, their faces reflecting a mix of determination, hope, and desperation. One of such incredible escapes is that of a beloved husband and father who wished for a better life and a greener pasture for his family. But did he succeed with his plans? From facing hunger and oppression to enduring unimaginable hardships, their journeys exemplify the extraordinary strength of the human spirit. You won't believe the heart-wrenching sacrifices and the unwavering courage displayed by those who dared to defy an oppressive regime. These tales will touch your heart, reminding us all of the universal longing for liberty and the lengths people will go to reclaim it. What do you think about these? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. A whole family. Sometimes, when all hope seems lost, it becomes necessary to take matters into your own hands. And that's precisely what happened when a South Korean Navy ship stumbled upon a remarkable sight in the West Sea. Imagine this, a five-ton wooden boat carrying 22 North Korean defectors caught the attention of the South Korean Navy. The boat was spotted approximately 38 kilometers south of the de facto maritime border, known as the Northern Limit Line, and about 41 kilometers west of Daejeong Island. 
This unexpected encounter left everyone astounded. Among the group of defectors were 12 men, 10 women, and even 8 children, with three of them under the age of 10. A South Korean security official, while analyzing their information, marveled at their audacity. Just imagine the sheer courage it takes to brave the vast expanse of water with a bridge made of hope and to undertake such a perilous journey. You see, very few North Koreans dare to escape across the sea. Why? Because they must be prepared to face the uncertainties of drifting, at the mercy of the currents and the elements. According to the Unification Ministry, a total of 112 North Koreans fled from the seaport of Nampo and 334 from South Huanghai Province, which borders the West Sea, by the end of last year. These numbers may seem small in comparison, accounting for only 2% of the total 21,294 defectors who had made their way to South Korea as of April this year. The story of this family captures the imagination and reminds us of the countless untold tales of those who have sought refuge, freedom, and opportunity beyond the borders that confine them. It reminds us that amidst the vastness of the sea, the human spirit can find the strength to navigate through the darkest of waters in pursuit of a brighter future. Their journey symbolizes the universal longing for hope, the quest for a life where dreams can flourish, and the enduring human spirit that refuses to be confined by borders or circumstances. He on Seo Lee. Here is another fascinating story. It's about He on Seo Lee, a truly remarkable woman who defected from North Korea. Her journey is filled with courage, loss, and a determination to shed light on the hidden darkness of human rights abuses. Hyun Seo Lee's tale starts with her unwavering belief that North Korea is the greatest place on earth. But everything changed in 1995 when the cruel realities of famine, death, and brutality hit her like a ton of bricks. Imagine having your world turned upside down in an instant. It was a wake-up call that shattered her illusions and forced her to confront the harsh truth. With her very survival hanging in the balance, Hyun Seo Lee made the incredibly brave decision to escape from North Korea. She had to leave behind her family, her home, and the country she held so dear. The weight of those losses must have been unbearable, yet she pressed on, determined to find a new life. Since her escape, Hyun Seo Lee has become an extraordinary advocate for human rights. Now she has fearlessly stood before the UN Security Council, sharing her own story with the world. Through her powerful speeches and gripping articles published in prestigious newspapers, magazines, and journals, she has managed to drag this human rights tragedy out of the shadows and into the glaring spotlight of global attention. And you know what's truly inspiring? Hyun Seo Lee has transformed her losses into a beacon of hope for others. She has shown that even in the face of unimaginable adversity, there is always the promise of a brighter future. Her resilience and determination have become a testament to the strength of the human spirit. The story of Hyun Seo Lee is not just about one woman's escape. It's a prompt that ordinary individuals can rise up and make a difference, even in the face of the most daunting challenges. So, let's applaud her bravery and celebrate her unwavering commitment to shedding light on the dark corners of the world. Huang Zhang Yap Huang's escape from North Korea was a daring and risky undertaking. Together with his loyal aide, Kim Duk Hong, he devised a plan to flee the country. In February 1997, after returning from a trip to Tokyo, they made their way to Beijing, China. There, they hatched a bold scheme to enter the South Korean embassy. With fake passports in hand, Huang and Kim presented themselves as South Korean diplomats to the unsuspecting embassy staff. However, their true identities were soon discovered, leading to heightened tensions between North and South Korea. In response, the Chinese authorities sealed off the South Korean embassy, intensifying the already tense situation. After a period of uncertainty, the Chinese authorities eventually permitted Huang to leave for South Korea. However, there was a twist to his journey. To ensure his safety, Huang had to take a detour through the Philippines before reaching his final destination. Fast forward to Huang's final days, and tragedy struck. On a fateful morning in October 10, 2010, Huang was found dead in his home in Seoul, South Korea. The initial reports suggested that he had suffered a heart attack while taking a bath. However, the circumstances surrounding his death raised questions. An autopsy was conducted, and it revealed no signs of poison or drugs in Huang's system. Surveillance footage from his home showed no indications of forced entry or suspicious activity. Despite the investigation carried out by the police, no concrete evidence supporting the theory of murder emerged. 
The official conclusion was that Huang's death was not the result of foul play. The circumstances surrounding Huang's final moments remain shrouded in mystery. It was a puzzling end to a life marked by dramatic events and daring escapes. The true cause of his death continues to be a subject of speculation and intrigue. John Hee Sung Let's dive into the fascinating story of John Hae Sung, also known as Lim Ji Hyun, the North Korean defector who captured headlines with her mysterious disappearance and reappearance on North Korean television in 2017. Brace yourself for a tale filled with twists and turns. Before her disappearance, Lim Ji Hyun gained attention for bravely sharing her experiences of life in North Korea. In April 2014, she made a daring escape from North Korea, crossing into China by entrusting all her savings to brokers. After reaching South Korea, she worked as a bartender, but it was her captivating storytelling on social media that truly brought her into the limelight. Her popularity soared, and she became a frequent guest on South Korean television, sharing her insights and shedding light on the hidden realities of North Korea. However, fame often comes with its fair share of scandals, and Lim found herself embroiled in a shocking controversy. A scandal erupted when she was accused of being involved in during her time in China. Photos were released supposedly depicting Lim engaged in explicit acts. But here's the twist. It was later revealed that those photos were not of Lim at all. Despite the false accusations, the damage was done, and the controversy took its toll. Then, in 2017, something astonishing happened. Lim disappeared from South Korea. Her home was left untouched, leaving the police puzzled. Speculation ran rampant, and the truth seemed elusive. But just when everyone thought they had seen the last of Lim Ji Hyun, she resurfaced in June 2017 on none other than North Korean television. In a jaw-dropping interview, she made startling claims. She described life in South Korea as hell on earth and expressed regret over her decision to defect. She even went as far as begging forgiveness from none other than Kim Jong-un himself. According to her, she was now living with her parents in the North Korean city of Anju. While Lim insisted that her return to North Korea was voluntary, many couldn't help but wonder if she had been kidnapped by North Korean agents. The mystery deepened, leaving everyone intrigued and perplexed. And that was the last we heard of Lim Ji Hyun on North Korean TV. Her sudden reappearance and subsequent silence only added more layers to the enigma surrounding her. We may never know the full truth behind her story, but one thing is for certain, John Hae Sung or Lim Ji Hyun has left an indelible mark on the pages of North Korean defector history. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.